If you feel that you have value to bring to the table, that nervousness disappears. You have the right to be there as much as anyone else. Yes, this is gonna be yours. You are gonna start this from start to finish and you are in charge and you're the one up at night because you feel certain that you're doing something that's bringing value yeah. to people and to the world. And that's Brielle mayberg Halbert, founder and president of All Day Alba, where we spoke about her niche in fashion wear, steps in starting a business, celebrating the small wins, and balancing it all while being a mother of three young children. Next up on Hustle and Grind. At All Day Alba, my team and I create fashion wear. It's not active wear, it's not athleisure, it's not women's wear, it's fashion wear. Is there a certain age category? Like who are your true customers? Our true customer is a woman on the move. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that could yeah. be any age. <laughs> right now, um, mm -hmm. I'd say like our target is 25, move to, to 55. You know, mm -hmm. I think that that woman is appreciating our message right mm -hmm. now. We're speaking, you know, really to them because she's on the go. She has to be able to say yes. She mm -hmm. doesn't have time to say no. And we searched and I looked and I saw all the brands doing clothing in this material, but they weren't doing it with that element of design mm -hmm. that those women wanted and needed to look put together and, and professional in the settings that they were going. Yeah. That's so awesome. we've been filling that void for them. How did you get that kind of knowledge about entrepreneurship to say, hey, I want to find a market fit? Did that just come to you or was there some background that you had? Well, I grew up in a highly entrepreneurial family uh, in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. with not just one, but two parents who started from the bottom up businesses wow. in different uh, industries. And I really did always want to start something on my own because I feel I watched the you know, people who mm -hmm. felt that they could bring value to the world and they did. And wow. I said, if you can bring value and you have the resources and the energy, the entrepreneurial mind and spirit to do mm -hmm. it, then do it. Energy is a key word, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. No, that's fantastic. And I, I can say that I have worn several of their pieces, right? So um, Brielle and I met on set. We worked together with her brand, but what I love about your pieces, my girlfriend and I, we were gonna take city bikes through the city, and so I'd packed my clothes for the weekend, and that was my Saturday look. It was the, the black All Day Alba dress, mm -hmm. right? And I had paired it with some, old, some other leggings that I had that had like a gold stitching as well. So I was like, it's gonna be cute, and it's gonna take me from day to night, because I didn't know what our whole day was. So the fact that I was able to ride through the city on a bike with that dress on, and then we went out to dinner. I was like, this is what your collection is about. It's all day, like I can literally do this all day and I felt good. So that was a huge selling point for me. Yeah, I think that, first of all, I'm so glad you got to wear the dress. I was gonna say, is that not like so cool it to get that so feedback? Cool. Yeah, it was like did. unbelievable. <laughs> and I think that like yeah. both men and women would probably agree that we don't wanna ever feel overdressed yes. or underdressed. It's really uncomfortable. Yes. And I think like that is the USP of All Day Alba where like, we don't need that discomfort. We don't, we don't need it because it's, mm -hmm. it's possible not to have it. If you have the right clothing, yeah. you can leave early in the morning, really not knowing where your day is gonna mm -hmm. go, like in the yep. case of Joy in New York, exactly. <laughs> and go all over the place. And really, not only are you not gonna feel overdressed or underdressed yep. and shy or embarrassed or uncomfortable throughout the day, but quite the opposite. You're gonna feel, I can say yes. Someone calls you yep. on the fly, you gotta get somewhere. You're like, yes, I can. Cause mm -hmm. I, I don't have to go back and change. And I'm right. ready. Absolutely, so that, and it was comfortable. You know, that was such a key moment for me. So um, I'm a huge fan, and I think that a lot of women, because also as a wardrobe stylist, I get a lot of women that ask me, Joy, what can I wear right now? You know, a lot of my close girlfriends have said, I'm home with the kids all day right now doing COVID, but then we need to take them on a walk, then we need to go to the grocery store, then they want to meet their girlfriends. What can I do? And when they asked me those questions, I was kind of stuck at the time because outside of Lululemon or all the known athleisure brands, right? right. That was my only option because this was before you came into my life. Yeah. <laughs> and so now I can say, here is your answer. And I, what I love about that too is something unique. I think, I know I, I'm, it seems like this is also menswear too, which I love <laughs> because it, the, the athleisure wear, you know, I have some Lululemon shirts that I actually really like. And it was kind of, I thought it was only for women. 
but it's that same concept that it, you want a little bit of fashion, mm -hmm. but I think you want something unique. Like I don't want to wear something that everyone else has. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that when we were living in DC, it seemed like all the, the moms had the same outfit right. on. Mm -hmm. Right, and, so and, and oftentimes mm -hmm. just like one solid color. Yes. And I think with high fashion, what we find, if you walk into the shops of the, of the high fashion brands we all know and, yeah. and, and love and, mm -hmm. and look at and admire, they have these stunning prints. And, to have that printed on mm. what a classic kind of legging, I think is like such a cool new fusion. That's yeah. why we call it something different. I love and it. Um, I think the Nadia pant that yeah. um, Joy's familiar with, it's almost <laughs> like a jogger style, yeah. yep. but then it has these like Italian elastics like, that are oh. personalized and these um, gold prints that have actually cherry blossoms on it. So, you know, it's really so nice. we're doing something new to solve these challenges. It seems to me like what you told me earlier, like myself, I did not have any creative examples. I had entrepreneur examples, but not creative ones. You're in a creative industry. Um, did you get any weird pushback on that? And if so, what would you say to somebody getting into a creative arts entrepreneurship situation? That's a great question. First of all, just to start, I would say to those young um, students or people who are desiring to be entrepreneurs, you have the right to be there as much as anyone else. And I think that's really important to remember. And whether it's creative or it's high tech, whatever it is, like you really do have the right. And there are, and to go to the question, there are studies that can support any industry. So I think if you have the study background, the experience, um, that's one route to basically never get that pushback. I mean, you have the skills. The other way to do it, a little bit the route that I took, is to surround yourself by the professionals that you need. So I think as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. don't be shy to say, I need help in this area. You know, I might be the mind driving this business, but I need support mm -hmm. in design. I need support in, you know, um, manufacturing. Like, you know, you can't necessarily be able to, you can run it all, but you can't necessarily nitpick and do it yeah. all. And I think it's an important um, point to, to tell those those aspiring entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that yes, this is gonna be yours. You are gonna start this from start to finish and you are in charge and you're the one up at night. Mm -hmm. But if you have a great team of people surrounding you, then I think you won't get that pushback because you've yeah. actually done what you need to do to make yeah. a, a I successful business. I love and I hope business. you guys I, out right? there listening because this is really good uh, inspiration, but it's, it's actually, there's, there's some steps there, some thoughts there that I just think are more than just woo-woo. It's yeah. like, that, so thank you, I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. So now tell us about the team you've surrounded yourself with. So I, you know, first of all, mm -hmm. <laughs> started with, of course, a small team, because yes. that's how we all start, right? Uh -huh. But what was essential and what I would totally do again or, or recommend <laughs> doing is a tiny team of people who are there not for you, just because you hire them, but they're really with you. Mm -hmm. They really believe in what you do. Yes. And sometimes I look at them and I say, okay, like, oh, like it's late, you know, it got late and they're going to bed. And I'm like, well, they could probably sleep better than I can because <laughs> yeah. like we didn't finish, right? And I'm the one who's gonna be up tonight. Yeah. But I actually am finding mm -hmm. that depending on the time of team, type of team that you put together, they're gonna be up at night too. Not to say yes. we want them not yeah. sleeping. Yeah, Jeff and, 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 uh, and uh, Bellary. Yeah. You guys are up late, right? Oh. Editing. <laughs> right. It's true. They actually right. are. Sorry. It's so true. I think mm -hmm. that like that has been essential for me mm -hmm. in, in creating the right kind of team work and team environment. So um, I work with, um, first of all, a variety of ages. I think that is key. Mm -hmm. um, I find that everyone gives really, really valuable perspectives. Being an entrepreneur on the one hand, it's kind of like it's all me. But on the other hand, it's really all your, your, your starting team. It's like a real... Um, becomes a family for the little, for the business that that's growing, and um, and the different age perspectives has been has been essential for me. You know, especially being a younger entrepreneur, yeah. being open to what the team has to say is so important. Yeah. Did you ever feel intimidated by starting at such a young age? You know, feeling like we hear this word a lot with entrepreneurs. I feel it, imposter syndrome. I know. I mean, your answer earlier saying that you 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 belong in that room is very key to young people. But did you feel any of that when you were starting off? Um, nervousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just afraid, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, are they gonna think, what is this young girl trying to do here, you know? It goes back to what I said before. If you feel that you have the value to bring to the table, then I think that nervousness disappears. I feel really sure that if I was just working for another great company and doing, you know, I wasn't, I was gonna miss out an opportunity to bring something of value that I came up with. Mm. And so that really takes away that 
feeling of being afraid because you feel certain that you're doing something that's bringing value yeah. to people and to the world. And along those lines, was, is there, have there been any, there's got to be, pain points in your business? Any times where you thought, I can't do this? Or, and what have you done to kind of pivot that and get back, back up? I'd say like a major pain point is towards the beginning, which, you know, I still relatively am, mm -hmm. um, where it's kind of this touch and go between wanting to be established and, and big and known versus really appreciating the stage of that of the growth. And mm -hmm. I think that that is a challenge, kind of like to feel successful, you might think, oh, you've got to be there. You've got to be big. You've got to be known. You've got to have X amount of followers. But mm -hmm. I think it's also um, important to recognize that the, the beauty in the stage that you're in. So I think that's a constant challenge, is, is bringing myself back and, yeah. and, and appreciating the, the, the growth process. Yeah. No, and I think a lot of us get stuck doing that because I have to remind myself of those things too. And I have to remember to celebrate the small, the wins, like even the small ones, you know, because you were so busy doing, accomplishing one goal, and then we're like, oh my God, I gotta do the next thing, I gotta do, you don't even stop to recognize like, girl, you just did this, right. <laughs> yeah. you know? And you know, so, and I'm, I feel like you both would um, understand the feeling yeah. of also recognizing the mm -hmm. small wins, but like not taking on too much at once, like oh, yes. recognizing that I've got a lot on my plate and I should be proud of this work and not like, I need to take yeah. on another thing yeah. right now, so like, it's funny because my clothing are supposed to make everyone feel like they can say yes to opportunities. Yes. <laughs> but I think as an entrepreneur, it is important to yeah. know, not to, don't say no, but maybe don't say yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. That, that, or mean, say later. Later, exactly. <laughs> you guys are hitting on something. I mean, that resonated with me so much so, you know, as we try to be, and we're talking more in our, in our popular culture about being more mindful these days, especially with COVID and kind of, I had a forced a sabbatical for a little while yeah. and then helped you know my team that stayed on with me somehow it's been great we've been able to survive and, and build this thing but um to enjoy the small wins like you know this documentary i made heavyweight paint years ago uh, with one of my artist friends in that time you know I've, I've looked back i'll never be that filmmaker again i'll never be that person with a dslr camera i just mm -hmm. can't that's <laughs> over for me it was a great time in my life it was really fun but that's, I don't want to say it's a young man's game, but I'm not, that's, that's not me anymore. Mm -hmm. And that was a great time to, I, to celebrate and be in that. And now I'm on to the next phase. And I'm sure now it I'm became part of the DNA yeah. like of, Absolutely. of your work. Absolutely. And the people and the team members I work with are like that now. We're, we, that's kind of how we build up to our next thing. But it's time for me to, to sit back a little and do less hands-on. Mm -hmm. So to celebrate this phase now and mm -hmm. know that we're not there yet. But so thank you. That, that, that's really yeah. empowering. We've had a lot of great points today, which I really appreciate. You're a mom of two beautiful children, you're also a wife. How has that um, caused challenges or has that been helpful in this entrepreneurial journey? So first, um, I had another one. So oh, not, not right, since I saw right, you, it was right, like a month right, before. That's right, yeah. three, yes, so I yes, ended up with these yes. three little babies. Oh, I and I um, look at this young yeah, here. they're very cute. I love it. Um, so first of all, as Joy knows, they model for my brand. Yes. So right. we don't sell yet baby clothes, but they, mm -hmm. um, you know, with the moms. So yeah. they're modeling. So and boys, girls, what's the? I have a four-year-old girl. Actually, turned four today. Okay. And oh. I have my birthday was yesterday. Really? So that's cool. And I have two boys, like um, two I've, little. I have two boys. Okay, really? So, yeah. so fun. Yeah, they are the fun. Boys are a lot of fun. And crazy. <laughs> oh, yes. Really, really fun and crazy. So um, for me, mm -hmm. the way that the family life impacts my work mm -hmm. is really profound, I'd say. So mm -hmm. I find that when I include my family in my work, mm -hmm. I enjoy both my family and my work more because as an entrepreneur, we know mm -hmm. that we can't turn the off switch, right? Like we're on day, night. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, we're always yeah. on, okay? Absolutely. We can't put the anything aside, not mm -hmm. even when we sleep, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> although I have some tips about that because I think it's important to sleep. Okay, sure, um, <laughs> But I try to include, so even if that's um, sometimes like to tell your family about work, you know, after a long day, it's like exhausting to the point that you maybe rather just not say anything. Yeah. But I do find that when I sit, tell my husband about it for 10 minutes and he's then included, mm -hmm. I find that not only do I um, feel better about 
what I'm doing, but I also find that I don't feel guilty if I'm up late and not spending guilt. time. That guilt yes. is real. That guilt's real. And I suffer with that guilt a lot with my, and we don't have children, yeah. so it's just us, uh -huh. and I'm constantly working, and even when we're trying to watch TV together, and I'll call, I'm famous for saying, I'll just work on my laptop, we'll watch TV, but I'm not engaging with him, yes. you know? And he if he feel knows, uh, from my experience, if, yeah. he, if he knows what it is you're working on, mm -hmm. he won't feel ignored. He'll yeah. feel like part of it, and then he'll mm -hmm. be totally under Understanding that your head is turned and you're on your laptop. Yeah. Whereas if you don't share, and I've been there, have some there's yeah. been times where I've just been too exhausted to share. But my advice would be share. Mm. Share what you're doing with your family and you will feel that it all becomes one in, in a good way. You know, you're actually right. When I think back to it, when I do include him and ask his advice for things, like, hey, baby, what am I, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or even, <laughs> I'm famous, every time I'm trying on outfits for something, <laughs> babe, what does this look like? All right, and he'll, he puts his little input in there. Yeah. And he gets a kick out of it. Yeah. So I'll, I'll keep that in mind and do it And more. even if at the end of it, you don't even like their idea, you're like, no, because yeah. you know you already knew what you wanted. Yeah. You know? As entrepreneurs, <laughs> we always like know what we want. Right. But, um, but anyway, so. That's, that's good. So if that kind of answers the question, I really just try to um, infuse family life mm -hmm. into work life. I find it really works well. I know there's always these theories about separating it and yeah. walking out, but I don't know if as an entrepreneur it's possible to yeah. separate it. I don't know. Absolutely. I don't think there, there is. Yeah. So, Brielle, tell us, if our viewers want to know where to find your collection and get one of these amazing pieces that they can ride city bikes with in, in the heart of New York, where can they go? You can view and shop our collections at All Day Alba, A-L-L-D-A-Y, ALBA.com and follow us on Instagram with the hashtag of all day Alba. And check us out next time. That's our show. Terrible <laughs> 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 job. If you want to be a guest on our next show and you have a great story, check us out on the hustle.tv. Don't forget to like us on the link below and subscribe.